My name is Kevin Harlan. I'm a scientist with Montana Molecular, and today I'd like to tell you about some of the advances we've made in using our sensors to study cell stress and toxicity in iPSC-derived cell types. When screening for different drug-induced toxicity or negative side effects, the cell type you're looking at matters. And that's why many companies have gone on to develop iPSC-derived cell types to look specifically at cardiotoxic compounds or, more broadly, neurotoxic, cardiotoxic, and hepatotoxic compounds. And with these new iPSC-derived cell types, we need assays that are capable of being used in these highly specific cell types. And that's where Montana Molecular comes in. We've spent a great deal of time optimizing our sensors to be used in iPSC-derived cell types, including peripheral neurons on the left and cardiomyocytes on the right. Importantly, all of our sensors can be used in a number of different assays, including those based on plate readers, those based on imaging, or even high content analysis. Today, I'm going to tell you about one of our assays that focuses on detecting cellular stress and how it can be used in iPSC-derived peripheral neurons to screen for toxic side effects of different chemotherapeutic drugs. And the assay that we've created is a very simple one. You see here on the left, unstressed cells are noted in red, while stressed cells which in this case are stressed by the addition of an ER stressing compound, turn green. We next use this assay to screen for neurotoxic side effects in peri for you peripheral neurons from Encardia. And the assay protocol looks like this. We first seeded the peripheral neurons in 96 well plates, transduced them with the stress sensor, let them mature for two days, and then added four different compounds from a publication previously analyzing neurotoxic side effects of different chemotherapeutics. We then waited 24 hours and imaged the cells to quantify the increase in cell stress from these different chemotherapeutic compounds. And what you'll notice is that upon increasing concentrations of these different chemotherapeutics, in this case, the chemotherapeutic vincristine, you see that there's also an increase in the number of green cells within these populations. And what we can do then is use this percentage of green cells or percentage of stress cells within these populations to come up with a quantification of the level of cellular stress. And if we examine the percentage of stress cells as a function of increasing concentration of vincristine, you see we have a nice dose-dependent response. If we quantify EC50 values using this percent stress cells and different concentrations of vincristine, we can calculate an effective concentration of about 3.65 nanomolar. What's really nice is that using the standard assay for chemotherapy-induced neurotoxicity, which is the measurement of neurite length, we have highly similar IC50 values for neurite length or EC50 values for the percentage of stress cells. This holds true for a number of other compounds that we tested, except for this compound oxaloplatin, where you can see that the cell stress assay was able to detect neurotoxicity about two orders of magnitude prior to the neurite outgrowth assay. And this is just one example of how sensors developed at Montana Molecular can be used in these different iPSC-derived cell types to examine things like cell stress and toxicity. For more information about the cell stress sensor or our other sensors and assays that have been optimized for use in iPSC-derived cell lines, please visit us at montanamolecular.com.